is focus on your purpose. And that's something we all need to think about. What is our purpose? Why are we on this earth? Everybody has a purpose to be here, a divine purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, when he when he thought about you, had you in his heart, he already knew what you would be doing. Mm -hmm. and so he prepared those good works for you before the foundation of the world. And so let what we're going to be doing tonight then is looking at uh, fulfilling purpose and, and focusing on, on purpose. And we're going to really uh, use one scripture as our uh, launching pad. And uh, it talks in that scripture, it says, if our eye be single. And that word mm -hmm. single is a very rich word. And, and there's a lot of uh, uh, translations of the Bible that uh, translate it different things. But it means single, uh, singleness. So basically, we're looking at one thing. So we've got our attention on one thing. And out of that comes integrity. But another thing that's really interesting about that word, when we're single in our heart, then we can give generously and liberally. Those are other mm -hmm. other meanings of, of the word. So it's a very rich word. And what we'll see when we read this verse out of a couple of different translations, that if we're focused on our purpose, that's the singleness of our heart. Now, when I say purpose, your purpose may be like an umbrella that uh, comes over several things that, that uh, encompasses uh, several things, several different activities. So it's not just one activity, but it may be several different activities, but that within your purpose. And for example, uh, your purpose may include being a husband or a wife mm. or a parent or a teacher or a worker. All of those things might fit within your divine purpose. We need to know what that is. And we can only find out by the Spirit because it's in the heart of God. And the only one who can search the heart of God is the Holy Spirit. Mm, That's what you. 1 Corinthians 2 uh, starts out. So this word that we're going to be looking at, although I won't go into a lot of detail of what the uh, um, Greek word is, I just want you to know that it's a rich word. And it really means, when we get down to it, I believe it means the singleness of purpose. And so I want you to read it first out of the King James, because that's where I first saw it. And then we'll read it out of the Passion Translation. Matthew 6. Yes, 22. Matthew 6, 22. And 23. And 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body will be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Now let's hear it out of the Passion Translation. The eyes of your spirit allow revelation or light to enter into your being. If your heart is unclouded, the light, flood, light floods in it. But if you... If your eyes are focused on money, uh, the light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place. How profound will be the darkness within you if the light of the truth cannot enter into you? Okay. Wow, wow. So when when we look at these two uh, verses and the and these this two verses in two different translations, we see it's a much deeper word than just a natural light. He talks about the revelation, mm -hmm. about an enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've got to have our eyes looking uh, at the Lord in order to receive the enlightenment from him. Now, when we receive that enlightenment, it's going to affect our body. It's going to cause our body to be healed. Mm -hmm. It's going to cause us to be uh, prosperous in our finances, prosperous and successful in our relationships. So there's so many benefits of just simply focusing on the Lord, seeing what he wants us to do, and then that, then revelation knowledge and the light of the Lord. This is not about a natural light. This is not about a natural light at all. But this is looking at spiritual things, having our spiritual heart open so that we can receive enlightenment by the Holy Spirit.
Hallelujah. because we're looking at the Lord and, and it, it it talks about our body being uh, we'll be healed we'll be prosperous we'll be uh, successful full of life full we'll of life, full of life. Uh, this is a very rich verse a very rich word but we have to be single in our focus we have to fo be focused on one thing and that's the Lord and what he wants us to do on this earth mm, that's our purpose mm, mm, mm. I, I I love this concept oh, wow and uh I, I hope that you'll catch hold of it and you catch hold of it with your spirit, uh, not mm -hmm. with your mind, not with your mind at all. But we're going to stay awake, Wendy. <laughs> we're going to stay awake. <laughs> so we have to catch hold of it with our uh, spirit. And so I want to focus on this word, uh, the, the Greek word, and see that it shows up in a lot of different uh a lot of different places in the Bible. And so I want Sherry to read here a couple of verses. Okay. Do you want me to say the word? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? No, no, you don't have oh, to say okay. it. You don't okay. have to. This is the Vines uh, uh, dictionary from the, so this is the definition from Vines expository definition on New Testament words. And they're looking at the word single. So you don't have to look at the, read the word. Great. Okay. okay. Great. Great. Okay, and this is in Matthew 6, 22, and again in Luke eleven thirty four, which says, Singleness of purpose keeps us from the snare of having a double treasure and consequently having a divided heart. Okay. Let's oh, just look wow. At this. wow, 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 wow. Singleness of purpose. This word single. Yes. That, we, that the King James translates as single. Other places say pure or or uh, other words, but but basically it's focused on one thing. And when we're focused on one thing, then we're not concerned about two different uh, treasures. There, there's oh, only wow. one treasure. Oh, wow. And so we've got to focus on what the treasure really is because we're focused on a lot of different things. Then our heart becomes divided. That's a very oh, interesting yeah, concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our heart becomes divided. And so a benefit then uh, of us having uh, a singleness of purpose. And that's what the Vines mm -hmm. Dictionary says there. That if we have a singleness of purpose, we're just going to be looking at one thing and saying, this is the important thing. It's not all of these other things. The world wants us to look at these things and be focused on money and finances mm -hmm. and all of the success and uh, reputation and, and schooling uh, and, and all of yeah. these things. But what, what the Bible is saying, focus on one thing. That's the singleness of purpose. And when we do mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, we're going to have, our heart is going to be, undivided we're going to have a heart down here mm -hmm. once we start looking at different things we want, want this and we want that and we want to do this we want to do that that are not a, a related to our purpose then our heart gets divided Ooh, mm -hmm. that, that can be serious mm -hmm. and, and but but the verse says we're going to have light flood our entire being and that mm -hmm. relates to healing in our body right and, uh, prosperity in our finances and and success in our relationships, mm -hmm. strong relationships. Now, uh, we're going to look at just a couple of ways that this is translated in other verses, the, this same Greek concept uh, translated in other verses, and it talks about Paul's integrity. Uh, so I, I've highlighted, uh, I've put in bold uh, some words that come from this word single uh, in the Greek, and I want to share it read the verse first and then we'll and then i'll have her tell you what i had put in bold which means this single or sincerity or simplicity all of these uh it's a rich rich mm -hmm. word and, and so if we have this singleness of mind and it, then it simplifies everything mm -hmm. and we become se sincere see we're no longer hypocritical and we're no longer hypocrisy and uh mm -hmm. a pretentious and and the saying one thing and mm -hmm. meaning something else oh, and wow, we're wow. saying one thing to one person saying uh, something else to another but but we're single it goes down into our heart our heart is single and we'll always give the same response uh to the same issue because we will have integrity and that's exactly what paul's talking about here and read this second corinthians 1 12 
for our proud confidence is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in holiness and godly sincerity. There's the word, godly sincerity. That's the same word meaning single, singleness. Uh, now, now it's translated sincerity. So what were those? In holiness and godly sincerity, not in fleshly wisdom, but in the grace of God. We have conducted ourselves in the world and especially towards you. Okay, so what Paul is saying here is I have had my eye single. I've looked on, on my purpose. I haven't been divided in my heart. I haven't been double-minded. Mm -hmm. It's all been single. And as a result of that, I'm bringing forth sincerity to you. Uh, in other words, integrity. he's saying. In other words, he's saying I have operated with integrity. Oh, that's good, Freddie. That's really and, and, good. and so that's you really think good. about people who are not operating in integrity. It's because their heart is divided. Oh my goodness! Oh my and, goodness! And they'll they'll they're focused on this mm -hmm. and they're focused on that. They're not focused on one thing. They're focused on different things, and their heart gets divided. And then they're, they don't have integrity. They'll say one thing at one time, and the next time they'll say something different. No integrity. So it's all of this is related. What a wonderful and rich concept this yeah, is. Yeah, it is. And it realize is. it all goes back to are you focusing single-minded on your purpose? Single oh, hallelujah, purpose. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to look at the same Greek word again, but translated different things. Here it's talking about generosity and liberality. And it's so rich. I wanted to share you to read uh, four verses here, different ones, but it's all the same Greek word that in Matthew uh, 6, 22 and 23 was talked about single or singleness mm -hmm. or sincerity. And now it's going to be talking about generous. And so if we have one purpose, then we're going to be focused and moving towards one goal. And then we can be generous with what we do and what we give to mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. It's a rich, rich concept. Okay, okay. Sure, I'd like for you to read these four verses. Okay. We'll just go one at a time and comment about them okay. and highlight what I have put in bold letters mm -hmm. because that's where, where this Greek word is. Romans 12, 8. Are the one who exhorts in the work of exhortation, the one who gives with generosity. Okay. So this okay. is talking about giving with generosity. So it talks about the gifts in the body of Christ. That's the Romans 12. That's what Romans 12 talks about. And so it talks about these different gifts. But when it talks about giving, it says someone can be generous. Mm -hmm. because. And why is that? It goes all the way back to their purpose. They have a single purpose. Mm -hmm. They are focused on what God has put them on this earth to do. Okay. The one who is in leadership with diligence, the one who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now let's go to second Corinthians nine 11. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality. Woo wow. And it all goes back to if I have a singleness in my purpose, I know what my purpose is, then I'm going to read that phrase again. That's just incredible. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality. So you'll have all this enrichment in, inside of you that you can pour out generously yes, and liberally. liberally to others. Okay. Go Which ahead. through us is producing thanksgiving unto God. Second Corinthians eleven three, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his trickery, your minds will be led astray from pure and sincere devotion. That's what you've got uh, uh, yeah. highlighted. Pure and sincere devotion now to Christ. So, so if we start with this basic idea, we're focused on our single purpose. And then we're not going to be divided in our heart. We're not going to be divided in our mm, thinking. Yeah. And we're going to be sincere. Read this. Mm -hmm, read that mm -hmm. phrase again. It says, your minds will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion. You, your minds won't be. You, That's your, right. Your mind will be focused on what? Pure and, and sincere, sincere devotion, devotion to Christ. Devotion to Christ. 
Wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. It, it all goes back. The root of this <laughs> is oh, wow. simply having singleness of purpose to fulfill what God has put you on this earth to do. Amen. Why he has Amen. Oh, brought you forth. Why yeah. he has why his hand has been upon you. You find out that purpose and, and then uh, just read that phrase again that I highlighted it there. Okay. Sincere and pure devotion. Sincere and pure devotion. devotion. Amen. Amen. And one more verse. And this is all just looking at that word single. Okay. Uh, up there in Matthew 6, verses 22 and 23. It, it, it's such a rich word. Uh, and it en enables us to do so much with our life. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 6, 5. Slaves, be obedient to those who your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, with insincerity of heart, as Sin to Christ. Sincerity of heart to Christ. So, so if we have this singleness of purpose, then we will have, read that phrase again, sincerity, sincerity of your heart. Of your heart. Whew, it's a rich, amen, rich word. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. Now, there's a lot of people that can be focused on one thing. And David wrote something very interesting. He said, I, I'm interested in one thing. And so this mm -hmm. message is about being focused on one thing. But the one thing to be focused on is purpose. And, and what I want to want you to see about David uh, is that, and this concept of David, what he wrote, I, well, there's one thing mm. that I desire. But people have taken that out of context and perverted it. But I want you to read it, and then we're going to start explaining it. Psalms 27, 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Okay. Now, what this is saying Spiritually, it's about being in the presence of God and uh, seeking him and getting counsel uh, from him and seeing his beauty. Now, that's really the essence of what that verse is about. So David wanted one thing, and but I want to read it out of another uh, translation out of the voice, a modern translation. Read this, please. I am pleading with the eternal for this one thing. One thing. My soul desires to live with him all the days of my life, days of my life, in the shadow of his temple, to behold his beauty and to ponder his ways in the company of his people. Okay. The thing I want to emphasize here is that we could be focusing on the wrong thing. And here, David was focused on one thing, and he explained what it was. He wanted to be in the, uh, presence, of in the, the presence of the Lord. He wanted to see the beauty of the Lord. He wanted to get the counsel of the Lord. Now, religious people today look at that verse, and they pervert it. And I want to explain how they pervert it. Uh, they pervert it by saying the local church building is equivalent to the temple of God. And I, I've heard it recently. That's the reason I bring this yeah, point up. Yeah. Because the local church building is not the temple of God that David was writing about. Because I and want seeking you to, after. Yeah, he wasn't seeking that. He's not seeking a building here. He, he this mm, is not about mm, a building. Mm, and, and and the local church building and congregation is not this temple that David was seeking after because mm -hmm. there are two different dispensations. And we have to know that when we look at the Old Testament and in try, interpret it relative to the New Testament, there under the Old Testament, there was a dispensation and it was a visitation dispensation. Now, what is a dispensation? Well, it's a, an order of things for an appointed time and the way God appointed things in the Old Testament. And that mm -hmm. dispensation was a dispensation of visitation. That meant that God came down. And in that time, 
he might come down to uh, his temple. And so people would go to his temple to inquire of him. That was the way Moses operated. And so uh, Moses would go into the temple uh, and, and plead the case of the people or ask things of God or, or whatever. So that was an old dispensation. That was Old Testament dispensation. That was the order of things in the Old Covenant. Now, in the New Covenant, there is a different dispensation, a different order that God has appointed. And the order now is no longer a visitation where God just comes here or he comes there or he comes upon a person. But today, well, there's a, this is a, we're living in a habitation dispensation. By that, mm. God is inhabiting, inhabiting us. us. So you, we are the temple. You are the temple of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the house of the Lord. You are the residence of the Lord. You are the dwelling place of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I want you to read this Ephesians 2. Verse 22. Ephesians 2, 22. In Christ, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> this is an important under thing. And the point I'm making, see, I have four points I want to make today. And the first was if we're single in our purpose, uh, if we're focused on the Lord and the purpose that he has for us, then it's going to just flood us with understanding, revelation, uh, healing in our body, uh, prosperity, mm -hmm. strong relationships. But my second point, and this is from Psalm 27.4, we don't want to be focused on the wrong thing. David was focused on one thing. Now, in his day and time, that was a good thing to be focused on. But what people do now, they look at that verse and he try to equate the local congregation, the local church building to the temple of God. And that's not right because you are the temple of God. We're all being built up we're the habitation of God. And so we can only interpret the Old Testament in context with the New Testament. And, and the point I want to make in this second point is that you could seek the wrong thing. And mm -hmm. uh, I recently uh, read an, an article by a pastor. Uh, he, he was equating the temple of God in the Old Testament to the congregation to the church building that he was over and he's saying oh we need to get and come into the building come into the building mm -hmm. but that's mm -hmm. not true you are the habitation of god so it's possible to be off from the wrong purpose so my first point we've got to have singleness of purpose my second point is don't have the wrong purpose you've got to be with the right purpose, mm -hmm. and people will try to lead you astray. It's so the only thing that will keep you going in the right direction is the Holy Spirit. Thank the you. Holy Spirit will lead you. Okay, now I'm coming to my third point. So my third point is this, that we need the one thing that we're to seek is spiritual things. Mm. And, then, and we're just going to look at Colossians 3, three. verses 1 through 3. And so we've got to seek one thing yes that's true but let's seek the right thing Amen. And, and so we've got to seek spiritual things mm. things above and, and not things on the earth and, and so that's the singleness of heart that we're seeking the purpose that god has for us spiritual things read this please. colossians 3 1 through 3 if you have been raised up with christ keep seeking those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above and not on things here on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So here's my point. This is the third point. I just have four points in that, so it's going to go quickly. My third point is we need to seek the things that are above, spiritual things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we can seek the wrong thing. And the wrong thing is if we seek wealth or fame 
our fortune, our power, our uh, a mm -hmm. lot of things can be the one thing we could seek a lot of things, and I've seen a lot of people seek money, and, and it's destroyed them. Right, and, right. And so this is about seeking not only the one thing, but the one thing that God has put you on the earth to do. To do. And the only way we do that is by the Spirit, mm -hmm. and so we have to seek things that be above. Now I have a couple of examples I want to go uh, to look at, and. Uh, to uh, some different people in the Bible that were seeking the one thing. And uh, the first one I have, and I have a passage I want you to read about Simeon and Anna. And, and what's really interesting about them is that they had spent years in the temple praying. And what were they seeking? They yes, were seeking, seeking a redeemer yes. for Israel. Yes. And so they were seeking the one thing. And the one thing that God had put them on the earth for, and you might say, well, God didn't need them. Oh, he did. He needed them mm -hmm. because they were praying and interceding yes. for the Messiah. Yes. They're, they're, they, were, they were interceding for that. They were spending years. They had devoted their life to that. And I want you to just read uh, some of these uh, words about Simeon and Anna. And they were seeking the right thing. When Jesus was about a month old, Mary and Joseph brought him to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. For it was written of the law of the Lord, every firstborn male born shall be consecrated to, to the Lord. And a sacrifice of two turtle doves were to be offered. There was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout. The Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would see the Messiah before he died. Wow, well, isn't that? The Holy Spirit revealed that to mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. This was not something man told him. This is what we all need to do to find out what we're here on the earth to do. We need to find it out by the Holy Spirit. Now, mm -hmm. he was righteous. He was devout. He was led by the Spirit. That's right. Okay? He was in the temple when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus. And Simeon took Jesus into his arms. And he blessed God, saying, Now, God, you may you may let your servant die in peace. My eyes have seen your Savior, a light for the Gentiles. A light. And glory for your people Israel. Mary and Joseph were amazed at what Simeon said about Jesus. Okay, can then, you can you imagine? Here's a man he's praying. He's seeking one thing. He's seeking a redeemer for Israel. And God told him, you're not going to die until you see the redeemer for Israel. And uh, the parents come in and they bring a little baby mm -hmm. and he knows who the baby is. Yes. Woo, it just mind boggling uh, because he was seeking purpose. He was seeking a single thing, the purpose he was on the earth to do. He was righteous. He was devout. He was fulfilling what he had been called, called to, do. to do and the holy spirit showed him this is the one wow this is the one you have been praying for he says, nobody no natural man told him he said this child is god's promised one he will save god's people many will accept him and others will not okay Ooh. now listen to this next part because tommy and victoria you have asked for a confirmation this is your confirmation the child that you carry is one of god's intercessors and she will be opinionated from the time she comes out of the womb she will speak early she will read early and she will proclaim the gospel of the kingdom oh out of her will come <clears throat> prophecies for the end times out of her will come dreams and visions out of her will come the very essence of the lord and there was a prophetess named anna she was an 84 year old widow she never left the temple she prayed and she fasted day and night singleness of purpose yes you see that 
when she saw Jesus, she gave thanks to God. Then she told everyone that the Messiah Ooh. had come. Woo. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. The Spirit revealed these things yes. to Simeon and Anna. And it was because they had singleness of purpose. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, God will reveal things to you that others do not know because they're so busy, busy, busy. And that leads you to your next okay, point. Okay, so now we're going to look at two sisters. One is busy and one mm -hmm. is seeking the one thing mm -hmm. that was necessary. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. The real difference. Mary, Martha was doing so many things. She was she was focused over here and she was focused over there. Yeah, she, she was, was on that preparing. committee and that committee. And Woo, she's doing all yeah. of these good things. But listen to the conversation with Jesus. Luke 10, 40 through 42. But Martha was distracted with all of her preparations and her busyness. And she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all of this serving by myself? Tell her to help me. <laughs> Verse 41. But the Lord answered and said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. But only one thing is necessary. And Mary has chosen the good part. And it shall not be taken from her. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you hallelujah. a Mary or are you a Martha? Oh, mm, hallelujah. Mm, mm, now, mm. let's just look at that situation for a moment. Uh, Mary and Martha had all of these people come to their house. Mm -hmm. And so Martha just sprung into action and she began fixing the food and began preparing for everybody. And but Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, do, hallelujah. You, do you think that Jesus could have fed that household of people with just a little? He <laughs> with, fed, he, with two he, loaves and five fish. He just <laughs> fed multitudes. He <laughs> fed multitudes. Martha didn't need to do everything she was doing. She needed to sit at Jesus' feet. Mary. Oh, let's read that phrase again. She found that necessary thing. Listen to this. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken from her. The good part. The good part. The one, th one thing that was necessary. Oh, wow. Ooh, read, read that last. But only one thing is necessary. Only one thing is necessary. Mm. This goes back to our, our verse that we started with. Matthew 6.22. Is your eye single? Is it, are mm. you focused on one thing? Mary chose that one, one thing, thing that was necessary. Can, are you like Mary or mm. are you like Martha? Yeah. Woo. This is an important message. Mm -hmm. I, believe. Mm -hmm. I believe it is. Now, those are my first three points. And the fourth one is just simply be encouraged. Be encouraged. Set at Jesus' feet because our God is real. And our, he has hope for you, and his hope is genuine. You can trust in him. Amen. So Amen. I just have a, a few verses to look at here, but that's my point. That's my fourth point. Be encouraged. Be Have hope. Hallelujah. 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 And, and the first point, uh, first thing I want to talk about in this is that God has already prepared everything for has given you all things that pertain to life mm -hmm. and, and godliness. God. Everything you need in life, God's already provided. Isn't that exciting? Well, where mm -hmm. is it? Well, it's in your heavenly account. And those are your promises. And those promises bring all of that. And so you receive what God has for you by faith. See, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. And Martha, Martha did not please God. With mm. all her busyness. Uh, wow. Because Even though she was doing what society would say was was a good thing. Yeah, it was a good thing. Was it uh, uh, the, the social gospel? Social the gospel, gospel is, is what? Be good. Be good. Do, do good. good and more. get more. 
But that's that's not, the social gospel. But that's not the kingdom of God. That's not the kingdom gospel. Be encouraged. Be encouraged okay. today. God has given you all things mm -hmm. that pertain to life and godliness. godliness. When you seek that one thing that is necessary, you re can receive anything from him and everything. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You receive it by faith. Okay. I have mm -hmm. a couple more verses from Psalm. I want you to read that we don't be encouraged. Well, so why is, why are you so discouraged? Yeah. Why are you, my soul, why are you discouraged when we have already, already been given everything that pertains to life and godliness? So I just want to end with these two verses from Psalms. Be encouraged tonight. Psalms 42, 11. Why are you in despair, my soul? And why are you restless within me? Wait for the Lord. For I will again praise him for the help of his presence, my God. Oh, it's all about the presence of God. Amen. Not We're lovely. back to, we've come a full circle yes, here. Yeah. Psalm 31, 24. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait upon the Lord. It says, God is real. Hope is genuine, even in the days of trouble. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Regardless hallelujah. of what you're going through, it's God we need to look at. Focus on the Lord, yeah. and he will provide all. You know, Matthew 6, uh, 33 says, mm -hmm. first the kingdom of God, and, and all his righteousness. these things, and his righteousness, and all these things. Will be, be added, added unto to you. you. Are you single in what you're looking at, or are you double-minded, mm -hmm. going here and there, and worrying about this and worrying about that? See, Martha was worried, but not Mary. Oh, Mary just sat at the, the master's feet. feet. Oh, hallelujah! Amen. Where, where Amen. are you sitting tonight? I'm going to turn it over to.